Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick and dirty inverse foot setup here. Hopefully this will take less than 10 minutes or so. Um, the first thing we're going to need is our joint chain. Kind of a high ankle on this dude, but we're going to, we're going to go with it. Uh, go ahead and do uh, create an IK handle. This is going to be a rotation plane solver. And what that does is now if I move that around, we've got our IK set up, and the foot's going to follow. Everything should, be, everything should be basically good as a starting point. All right, uh, we're going to need a controller for this. So I'm going to go ahead and add a NURB circle. Kind of make that large enough that it would go around the uh, the mesh, and then it's a little tough to see this control from the side view, for instance. So I'm just going to grab the the outside CVs here and just kind of pull them up a little bit, make it a little bit more like a snowshoe or something. And then it's quite broad, so I'll just sort of scale those guys in, so something like that. So just give them kind of a again like a snowshoe here. All right, um, so that'll be our main foot control. So I'm going to go ahead and name these things as we go. Right. And then we need uh, the inverse foot set up here. And the, the reason you use inverse foot is it just makes it easy to roll off the ball or the toe or the heel. And I'm not going to show you every, um, everything that you can do to modify this. It's just getting the basic setup here. So I'll just do create um, locator. You don't even have to use locators. You can just use groups if you don't want to see anything at all. But with the locator, I'm just going to press and hold V and then snap it up to that joint there. All right, and you can keep doing the same thing, just create um, locator uh, and then V and snap, or you can use control D, which is duplicate, and then V to snap that into place, control D again, and move that back to wherever the heel is going to be. You would want to have your mesh in place to really know where that uh, pivot point should be. Uh, we'll go ahead and name these, uh, INV uh, for inverse heel, and then um, inverse toe, inverse ball, and then inverse ankle. And the reason this is called inverse is we're going to set them up in a hierarchy that's opposite the normal flow. So normally you'd have the ankle controlling the ball, which controls the toe. What we're going to do here is just push everything backwards. So the ball is going to control the ankle, the toe is going to control the ball, and the heel is going to control the toe. Right? So this is what that hierarchy should look like. And the reason it's set up like that is now if I grab the heel and I rotate it, the whole foot goes along. If I grab the toe, the whole foot except for the heel comes along. If I grab the ball, just the ankle moves along. All right? uh, so uh, other hierarchy stuff that needs to happen is you need to grab the heel, and I'm just going to middle click and drag that onto foot control, and I'm going to grab the IK handle, and I'm going to middle click and drag that onto foot control. All right, so that gives that's the full setup. So now if I move foot control, basically everything moves the way it should. A couple things that I'd want to change here: uh, the pivot point for foot control is sort of arbitrarily set down here in a weird spot. So I'm going to press D and then V. I'm going to snap that up to the ankle, and what that does is now if I rotate it, it would rotate right around that ankle joint. All right, look over here in the channel box on my foot control. You can see that I have transforms on these, and all of them are going to have uh, you know, various transforms that we don't want. What we want here is identity transform zeros for everything uh, translate and rotate, and one for scale. So to get that, just select the topmost uh, node in the hierarchy, in this case foot control, modify freeze transformations. See that gets us back to zeros and ones here. And that does that for all the children as well. So you can see that all of these are all identity transform. So I typically like to delete history um, before moving forward as well. So just edit, delete by type uh, history on that, and that should get us um, all cleaned up. All right, so uh, the way you set up uh, the constraints for this so that your inverse foot actually does something is uh, select the, uh, the inverse ankle, and then you also need to have the inverse handle selected. So I'm just going to actually open this up. I'm just going to press Shift so you can see this really clearly. So I have my inverse ankle selected first, and then I'm going to Control click my inverse handle in the outliner. You would Shift click that or Control Shift click that in the viewport. And then Constraint, and then we're going to do a point constraint on this. Uh, you want to reset settings and then maintain offset. Make sure that's turned on. And then click Add. Uh, and what that should have done is the IK handle should now be point constrained to the ankle. All right, uh, and that will get us uh, going in the right direction here. And then we want the inverse ball to control the, uh, I should have uh, named my joints as well. I'll go ahead and take a second here. Um, I guess I'll call it hip, stick with my joint names. Okay, um, so again, let me just go here. I'll select the inverse ball. And then in the viewport, I'll uh, hold Control and Shift. You can see I get the plus. Uh, select that there. And then I'm going to constrain and then orient uh, constrain this. And I want to do the same thing, reset settings, make sure maintain offsets on. Click Add and select the inverse toe. Select the ball joint, constrain, orient, constrain. All right. And so that should be it. We should be now working. So now if I grab the main foot and move that around, 
you can see that the whole joint chain works and the foot doesn't angle down in any kind of awkward way. Uh, if I want to pick it up and rotate the foot, I've got full control of that just with that rotation there. If I want the foot to come up um, onto uh, the ball of the foot, I grab my inverse ball and I rotate that. That brings up my ankle and grab my inverse toe. That would bring up both the ball and the ankle and grab the inverse heel and that would allow it to pivot around that heel. All right, so that gets you basically everything you need. You can go ahead and animate uh, just like this. It's just a little clumsy because you have these um, locators that you would have to grab and move. And most of the time, it's just easier to have that all condensed onto a single control. So I'll give you a, a quick overload, uh, overview of that. Hopefully it's not an overload. Um, so basically the way this works is you go to the inverse, I'm sorry, you go to the foot control and under uh, edit, choose add attribute. And then these can be named whatever you want, uh, but I'll just call it um, heel roll. And I want it to be of a data type float because I'm going to be pulling one channel um, and it needs to be have that precision. I'll say add. I'll do uh, ball roll and then toe roll. Uh, there are lots of other things we can do with this. And um, you can automate it transitioning from the ball to the toe and all that stuff. But I don't want to go through that complexity in this video. I just want to give you a basic sense of how this works. OK, so now we've got those three channels, uh, which do nothing. You can see I can. I'm middle clicking and dragging for virtual sliders and it just does nothing. So basically what I need to do is I need to look at this and see that, okay, it's my rotate X that I want to control with this. And then all I would do is connect those two uh, things together. There are lots of ways to do uh, connections. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and show you this in the node editor. Uh, it's just a straight, simple way to do it. But you can do connection editor. You can do lots of different ways of doing this. So I've got my, my foot control. You can see that it's actually on the transform node. It's not on the shape node. So I can move my shape out of the way here. Um, and I want to open this up. And here you can see all of my different outputs and all of my different inputs. And here are the custom attributes that we added right here. Uh, and then I want to just go ahead and grab this guy here. Uh, and I can add that um, to the network uh, right here. So I'll add my inverse um, heel. And basically, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my heel roll, and I'm going to drive that rotate channel. So remember, it was rotate x. So take heel roll, put it into rotate x. That's it. So uh, now what we should be able to do is grab uh, the foot control, grab heel, con heel roll, the, the text, and then middle click and drag. And you can see that actually works as intended. All right, and that would be the same thing uh, for, the, for the other elements. Um, so I'll go ahead and um, grab both these guys. I'll go ahead and uh, add those in here. And again, I want the transforms. I don't really care about the shapes in this case. So you can press minus and get rid of them, or you can just do what I just did and just kind of tuck them away. Um, so these are also, also going to be um, rotate x channels on these. So I want the ball. Just go to rotate x here. Uh, of course, I would want to do that to the ball. So I'm going to grab the toe here and go to the toe. And then let Maya reposition things as it sees fit. I'm sorry that if that was uh, a little bit off screen. I didn't notice that I was out of my um, screen capture area there. Um, OK, where did my other? There you are. OK. All right, so basically same thing here. Just open up that uh, rotate plus there and plug up that guy. All right, so they all should be to rotate x. Uh, so let's just double check that this does what it's supposed to do. So heel does the right thing. The ball roll just rotates the ball. There's an awkwardness here if I go under um, zero, so I might want to limit that. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, and there's your toe. So um, I can go ahead and um, just uh, limit these, just hard limit them for now. There are other ways to deal with this, but just for simplicity, I'll just go ahead and do it here. Um, so on my toe roll, I'll say it has a minimum, and that's zero. On my ball roll, it has a minimum, and that's zero. I'm going to leave the heel alone, and then we'll just double check that that uh, works the way we want it to. Okay, so now you can see I can't bring that down any further there. Um, and then my toe should do the same thing. Okay, and uh, if you wanted individual toe control, you can do that as well. You just need to have a group in here so that you could um, you know, constrain the group instead of the actual joint, and then you could uh, let the joint um, do its thing. So this would just be, this joint here would just be in a group, and that group would be constrained instead of the joint itself. And that way, you'd still have direct control over the joint. Then you could have another slider that just moves that toe up and down. Uh, but that should do it. That should give you a basic um, inverse foot. It's a little quick and dirty. It's not everything that the inverse foot can do, uh, uh, but it should uh, get you going in the right direction.